Chapter 25 Christmas Morning Kitty Kitty wiped sweat from her face with her towel as she climbed the stair contraption in the gym of the hotel. She could never remember what the machine was called. Ben was beside her, doing the same on his. It was awkward. Ever since the kiss, they had been avoiding each other's eyes, ignoring the embarrassing tension, and being ultra-polite. Kitty was tired of it. This time everything was different from what she normally experienced trying to start a relationship with a guy. Mostly, the guy gave some sort of indication of what he felt, what he wanted, and she would respond to the given cues. If he didn't seem into her, she would try to clear the air, joke that the kiss had been a mistake, and move on. If he did seem into her, then she would flirt up a storm. Ben was keeping his feelings close to the chest, waiting for her to make the first move. Kitty didn't know what to do. She hoped Ben and she would remain friends no matter the outcome. She supposed she wanted more than friendship from him. After yesterday's events, where he had disappeared all day after that crazy guy had held them hostage with a bomb, Kitty knew that she cared more for Ben than she had previously thought. She had been worried sick about his welfare while he totally forgot about her and worked to get the hotel back up and running. It was a little depressing. Perhaps he just didn't feel the same way about her that she was starting to feel about him. Kitty was going to have to scold her friends for putting the thought of a future with Ben in her head. His probable rejection wouldn't hurt so much if she had not realized how much she wanted a guy exactly like him. Who was she kidding herself, thought Kitty. Ben was who she wanted. Ben, who made her feel safe and cared for. He was always available to help her with anything. Plus, ever since last night, he made her palm sweaty and her heart skip a beat when she looked at him. All because of that ill-fated kiss. Holly had said she could blame it on the booze. Kitty didn't want to. She would rather repeat it. The timer on her watch went off, and Kitty slowed her exercise machine to a crawl. Ben would do at least ten minutes more than her, since his goal was to lose weight. Or rather, the goal Kitty had set for him. When Ben's brother Nate had died of a heart attack, Kitty had taken over Ben's nutrition and gym time. She wasn't going to lose him. Even now, as she did her cool down, Kitty could see another woman at the gym sizing Ben up. This was something new, which had started lately. Ben had dropped some weight and was losing inches. In response, some of the women who liked a huskier, fit fellow were starting to notice him. Kitty already had to fend off a couple of women who looked like they had been about to ask for Ben's phone number. It was starting to happen more frequently, the appreciative looks. Kitty wasn't a fan. She didn't want Ben to go out with some other girl. It was selfish of her, she knew. Kitty found she had become possessive of him. Her watch beeped again, indicating the workout was over for her. She shut down the machine and descended from it, grabbing a spray bottle with a cloth to sanitize it. Normally, Kitty would do some stretching while she waited for Ben to finish. There wasn't much room to do that in the hotel gym. While it had great machines and weights, the gym itself was small, almost as an afterthought in the design of the hotel. Kitty supposed guests paying this much didn't usually use the hotel gym, and likely had a membership somewhere more exclusive. Putting the spray bottle back, she was almost bumped into by the woman who had previously been eyeing Ben. Kitty stumbled out of the way and watched in surprise as the bottled blonde Instagram body perfect in nearly every way sidled up to Ben's machine. She practically purred a hello. Ben gave an uncertain greeting in return. Oh, definitely no, thought Kitty with a scowl. I was just, began the blonde, but Kitty, stepping beside her, nudged her a little briskly. Hey! I'm sorry, Ben, but could we cut this short? asked Kitty, ignoring the woman beside her. I'm not feeling very well. Uh, sure, agreed Ben. He shut off his machine and quickly sanitized it. Your friend should go to her room and lie down, said the blonde with concern as fake as her eyelashes. I'm all alone in the hotel, and I was wondering if you would like to have breakfast with me. If you'll excuse me, Ben gave her a confused look. I'm going to see my friend upstairs. Kitty shot the blonde a triumphant look 
as Ben threw the cleaning cloth into the appropriate bin. She grabbed onto Ben's arm as they exited the gym. She was a little odd, remarked Ben. Do you need anything from the gift shop? They sometimes have medications there if you didn't happen to bring any. Kitty didn't bother to explain the woman had been angling for more than breakfast. The whole episode had seemed to go over Ben's head. Once he lost a few more pounds, she had the feeling she might be fighting off all sorts of women. It was a little depressing. She was just about to confess that she was feeling fine when they ran into Mary, Ben's mother. Kitty had been getting mostly a cold shoulder from the impressive woman for the weekend. She didn't know what she might have done to deserve the attitude Mary was giving her, but she hoped by the time the weekend was over to get into Ben's mother's good graces. Hello, Mary. Mary looked her over from the sweaty head to sneak her feet. Finding her wanting, she turned her attention to Ben. Benjamin, I think it's time we had a discussion on your choice of company for the weekend. Excuse me? questioned a surprised Ben. Kitty blinked at Mary's tone. I'm sorry if I've given any offense. Offense? Your very existence at this event is an offense, sniffed Mary. She lowered her voice. Really, Ben? Bringing an escort to the weekend wedding? Is this what it has come to? She isn't even a high-end escort. I had to suffer your father's many infidelities. I'm not going to suffer you openly consorting with prostitutes in front of the family. Kitty's jaw dropped. She had no words for what Mary had said. Mom, Kitty is my friend, defended Ben. I asked her to be here. This is probably an indication of your income, tutted Mary as she ignored what Ben had just said. You don't make enough money to pay for class. If you would just stop with that silly company of yours, I'm certain Henry and Garrett would hire you. You could have a nice, comfortable life with Ramsley Hotels. There was absolutely no need for you to try to do the modern thing of becoming an entrepreneur. It's a fad, and obviously you're not doing well. Don't worry, I will talk to Garrett on your behalf. I'm sure he can come up with a suitable position. I'm happy with my job. Ben drew in a frustrated breath. I don't want to work for Ramsley Hotels. Mom, you need to apologize to Kitty. What you said to her was rude and untrue. Apologize to that tart? questioned Mary in shock. Why would I? You should be ashamed for even thinking of bringing her here. Mrs. Ramsley, Kitty inserted herself into the conversation. I'm not a hired woman. I'm Ben's friend. We've been friends for at least six years. I hardly think, began Mary, but Kitty cut her off. Ben is the best guy that I know. He's amazing, and he would never disrespect you or his family by bringing, what did you call me? A prostitute or escort to a family event? Defended Kitty with a small amount of heat. Also, Ben is happy with his work. He might not make as much as his brothers or be in the family business, but he enjoys what he does. How many people enjoy their job? Ben has a comfortable income, pays his bills, and is happy. Why would you want to change that? I can't believe any mom would rather their kid make a bunch of money and be miserable. Ben? Are you going to let her speak to me like that? An offended Mary asked her son. Ben sighed. We have had this argument many times, Mom. I'm not going to work for Ramsley Hotels. I like my work and I have no interest in changing careers. What Kitty said is the truth. The truth, harumped Mary as she eyed Kitty. I spoke to Hilda Sutherland. She told me how you've been hanging out for her son Tristan, making an absolute spectacle of yourself, and it's absolutely shameful how you were basically a kept woman. You built Tristan and his parents out of tens of thousands of dollars. Well, I won't have you digging your claws into the Ramsley family. As I said, I expect better of my sons. Kitty gasped in disbelief. Are you calling me a gold digger or an escort? I can't be both. If the shoe fits, bit out Mary. Mom, Kitty barely makes rent, asserted Ben. She certainly didn't get that kind of money from Tristan. He probably lied so he could get more cash out of his parents. He isn't a great guy. You're going to believe someone like her over me? demanded an indignant Mary. I'm saying you may only have part of the story, stated Ben calmly. I didn't take anyone's money, an upset Kitty stated firmly. I'm not going to stand here and listen to her lie, sniffed Mary. 
I'll see you at the luncheon today. I expect you will have sent the hussy away. I'm not sending her away, replied Ben to Mary's retreating back. He ran a hand over his face before turning to Kitty. I need to apologize. No, she needs to apologize. Kitty dragged in a breath. You did nothing wrong. If you want to cut the weekend short, we can, offered Ben. Kitty took his arm again, steering them towards the elevators. No, we were having a good time, and I like the rest of your family. I'm sorry she seems to have taken a dislike to me. Tristan's mom never liked me either. I guess they talked at some point. Apparently, sighed Ben. They entered the elevator, thankfully alone. Did you mean what you said about my job? Sure, shrugged Kitty. You love what you do, I can tell. I would never want you to change something that makes you happy just to chase a few more dollars. Your brothers might make more money than you, but if doing what they do won't make you happy, then you should stay as you are. Your bills always seem to get paid, so it's not like you're hurting financially. Sometimes I envy you a little. You do? asked Ben, surprised at Kitty's admission. I wish I had a job that I loved, admitted Kitty. It's not that I don't like working. I just get paid so little. I'm always behind. Also, I don't know what I want to do as a career. I'm not talented like you. I just want to have some kids and take care of my own little family. Most people think that's outdated. I think it's nice, mentioned Ben as they got off the elevator and headed toward their rooms. My mom didn't have a career. She does charity work, but I don't recall her ever having a job. Of course, we were mostly left to the care of the nanny. I don't want a nanny. I would want to raise my own kids and be a good wife, responded Kitty. I thought I would have that with Tristan, but I've realized since that Tristan isn't any good for me. I don't think I was really good for him either. Maya and Haley were right. I was more in love with the idea of what I thought he could give me, which isn't a good thing in a relationship. Ben paused outside her door. He hesitated. So are you over Tristan? I am, truthfully replied Kitty. I doubt he will be happy in his marriage, but honestly, I wish both of them the best. I'm glad, said Ben. You deserve better than him. Kitty fished out her room key. I guess we had better get ready for the luncheon. Yeah, agreed Ben. We should. I'll see you in a bit. Kitty waited until he was near his own door before entering her room. Tossing the key card onto the side table, she decided to have a shower first. Ben's mom thought she was the scum of the earth. Kitty sighed as she wondered if Ben would want to date someone who wasn't liked by his mother. Then again, he had stood up to her when it came to defending Kitty. Maybe he didn't think of her that way at all. Maybe Ben kissing her back had just been a fluke. More depressing was the thought that she might have imagined Ben kissing her back, Kitty thought with sudden self-doubt. She had been kind of buzzed. No, he had definitely kissed her back, Kitty decided as she shampooed under the spray. Hesitantly at first, but after a bit, it had been a great kiss. Even now, she could feel herself heating up a little from the memory. Ben was a better kisser than Tristan, which was saying something. If Kitty had never kissed Ben, she would have never known how he might make her feel. Not that she minded being safe and secure with him. Tristan had never made her feel like that. Kitty felt that she could tell Ben almost anything. Except, did she dare tell him she was developing feelings for him? She put on the hotel robe, and after rubbing away some of the condensation on the mirror, regarded her wet reflection. If she didn't tell him, Kitty had the feeling they would return to their normal routine as just friends again. They would ignore the kiss this weekend, pretending it never happened. It would be awkward at first, but eventually, it would be as though nothing had changed. Kitty looked at the girl in the mirror, who stared at her with sad eyes. She didn't want things to stay the same. She was going to have to do something about it. What had Holly said? Ben was used to other people making the moves. Well, she was about to make a big one. If she were wrong, Kitty was going to need to find a hole to hide in for the next month or two. If she were right, it could be wonderful. Giving the now-determined-looking girl in the mirror a nod, Kitty headed directly through the small sitting room to the adjoining door. She wrapped her knuckles sharply across it. Ben opened the door. He was already dressed in his dress pants, undershirt, and unbuttoned dress shirt. Kitty, are you all right? 
Did you change your mind about going to the luncheon? You will notice I am perfectly sober, solemnly stated Kitty. Okay, agreed a now confused Ben. I wasn't last night, but I am now, reiterated Kitty. I want you to know that. Ben frowned. Why? You seem to think I only kissed you last night because I had a little too much to drink, explained Kitty as she took a deep breath. If you would lean down, I would like to repeat the experience without the alcohol. Kitty, a surprise Ben managed to utter her name. I like you, Ben, confessed Kitty. Her voice started to trail off as her confidence waned at Ben's uncertain expression. I was hoping you might like me too. Are you sure about this? questioned Ben with concern. Just a few weeks ago you were with Tristan. I'm not exactly the type of guy that girls are interested in. Maybe you're going through a rebound phase or something. Are you trying to talk me out of this? wondered Kitty, a little taken aback. I'm just trying to find a logical reason, clarified Ben. Kitty stared up at him. Her face grew hot. She sucked in a breath as the bottom dropped out of her stomach. You don't like me. You're not interested in me. You were just being nice to me last night, as you always are. I'm like your kid sister. Kitty, began Ben, but was interrupted. No, that's how you treat me. Like the troublesome kid sister you're always bailing out, nodded Kitty as she voiced the revelation. She blinked back sudden tears. I feel so stupid. I have made a huge mistake. I'm sorry I shouldn't have said anything. Please ignore me. She abruptly turned, walking rapidly towards the safety of her room. She was going to die. Just die. Kit! Ben caught up with her before she could close her door, putting a hand against it. Will you just stop and talk to me a moment? I think we've said all we need to, sniffed Kitty, folding her arms across her chest in an attempt to shield herself from what he might say. You got to say a lot, but I didn't, Ben pointed out. Forget what I said stated Kitty. She looked at the wallpaper, or she tried to. It was blurry from the tears gathering in her eyes. Kitty fervently wished not to cry in front of Ben. Why was she suddenly so embarrassed, or so invested in his feelings? A little over a week ago, she hadn't even thought of Ben this way. She was going to kill Maya for suggesting Ben as relationship material. I was wrong. We're friends, right? No big deal. Kitty, would you just let me talk a moment? asked Ben with an aggrieved sigh. I have to get ready for the luncheon, said Kitty. It was the last thing she wanted to do right now. However, it was better than listening to Ben try to let her down easy. We don't want to be late. I like you too, revealed Ben. What? Kitty wiped away a tear, looking up at him in disbelief. I have had a crush on you since the day we met, said Ben in a rush. Really? whispered Kitty. Ben nodded, suddenly looking as vulnerable as Kitty felt. He was right in front of her. Kitty took a step towards Ben, putting her hands on his shoulders and going up on her toes. It didn't take any coaxing on her part for Ben to lean down and kiss her. She closed her eyes, leaning against him and enjoying the kiss. Ben was magic, she decided dazedly. Her body felt flushed and fevered. More importantly, for the first time in her life, it just felt right. Kitty? Ben cleared his throat. Kitty looked up to see his face beat red again. He was holding her robe closed, as at some point the tie had come undone. Hmm? Maybe you should get dressed? he asked. Okay, breathed Kitty. Briefly, she had the wicked thought of simply letting her robe fall to the floor. However, it might not be her best idea. Ben was a gentleman, she reminded herself. Things were going to go a lot slower in this relationship, and she realized she didn't mind at all. Kitty tied the robe firmly closed. I'll see you in a little bit. Yeah. Ben cleared his throat again and shut the door behind him, giving her privacy. Oh, I have so much to teach you. Kitty grinned as she headed back to the bathroom to brush and dry her hair. She hummed as she got ready for the day. The girl in the mirror had a silly grin on her face and Kitty thought she looked very happy indeed. Thank you for listening to The Wedding, book 10 of the Ramsley Brothers series. We only have a couple more chapters to go, so I hope you're really enjoying it. Happy listening!